Here is a basic summary of how the sheeple syndrome is created in public schools. Although many schools like to maintain an illusion of democracy, they are, in fact, autocracies, dictatorships. There is no room for individuality in the state school system. It is a hierarchy and in a hierarchy everyone answers to the person above them. If I, as a teacher, refuse to conform to the agreed and accepted systems of operation, I cause problems for my line manager and this in turn causes problems for his or her line manager. This continues right up to the head teacher of the school and beyond to the local authority and ultimately to the government. Any of my attempts to break the mold are therefore quashed as quickly as possible and the net around me tightens as tracking and monitoring of my teaching, planning and marking by more senior figures in the school is turned up a notch. Similarly well rehearsed procedures are in place to deal with children. Any child daring to express his individuality is soon identified, handed a label or put on drugs. A child who does not fit the system, that is, who is not normal must be forced to adapt. Labels such as AD, ADHD, ODD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism and Asperger's often crush the self-esteem of the child, causing self-worth issues long into their adult years, but as long as the child conforms with the system, who cares? The greatest reward in life is the internal satisfaction of a job well done. Schools do little to instill this idea in the minds of children. The widespread use of bribes, including stars, stickers, merits, certificates, sweets, chocolates, prizes and money, ensures conformity to the system and encourages children to place responsibility for their self-worth into the hands of others. Operating behind an illusory curtain of democracy is very useful to head teachers and their leadership teams because it means they can force through almost any initiative they like and then claim that everyone played a part in the decision. This is how it typically works. 1. The head teacher, or another member of SMT, makes a decision. 2. The decision is presented to the teaching staff as a proposal for them to discuss in their year team meetings. 3. Year teams meet to discuss the proposal, decision, until they are assigned to agreeing with IT. Any individual brave enough to voice their discontent at the point at which the proposal is introduced is shot down in flames and told in no uncertain terms that this is not the appropriate time or place to air concerns. This is often followed up with a quiet, or not so quiet, word from a senior figure, sometimes in plain sight and hearing distance of other members of staff, whose job it is to discourage the dissenting individual from disturbing the peace in the future, and to remind them to raise concerns through the agreed channels of communication, that is, through discussion at year team meetings, or by requesting an appointment with the head teacher to discuss the decision in the privacy of his office. Consequently, teachers learn to accept without question all orders from their dictators. Although they may whine and complain behind closed doors, very few have the strength or inclination to stand up in public for what they know in their hearts to be true. Children learn that they must place their trust in the hands of experts if they are to succeed in life. The sheeple syndrome is thus perpetuated. To create the sheeple we see today, 